Hello, hello. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. I have no idea. I even did a test run and everything was working fine. And I'm still not hearing on the live. So let me see if... All right, we're good to go. <laughs> ah! Hello, everybody, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 19 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, and today I'm going to teach you how to paint fabric with ink, not to be confused with fabric painting using paint. If you've ever used fabric paint before, go ahead and hit the thumbs up, and then you probably know that fabric paint can be really kind of sticky feeling and and sometimes it peels off in the wash. So this is completely safe. And I know that you guys want to see it because that's why I'm showing it today. Instead of running the sewing machine, I'm going to be inking. As I was asked to two weeks in a row. And I'm excited because it's very relaxing to just ink and not have to worry about the sewing machine running today. So hello, Tina. Was it you that asked me to do the inking. I can't remember. One of you did. So hi, Lori from Southern Arizona and Lorinda, you're here today. It's been a few weeks. Hello, better days. And Shion, Shion, Shioni. <laughs> I can't see. It's too small. Uh, from Pennsylvania. Welcome. I haven't seen you before on the feed. Uh, if you were here, you were hiding behind the scenes, as a lot of people do. Hello, Rita from Mississippi and Carolyn from... You didn't say. You just said you couldn't hear me. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> and Nikki from Florida. Yay! Everybody ready? So I thought I would tell you, you know, I... I had all kinds of ideas for, for inking this apron and I can do whatever I want, but time is, you know, it does run out at some point. This is an apron that I picked up, I believe, uh, I don't know. I actually have no idea. I did teach an apron embroidery class before and that's how, that's when I picked these up. And so that means they're probably about eight years old and they've been hanging just waiting for me to do something. So this is perfect because I've been doing a lot of gardening lately and my garden is what inspired, whoops, what I'm going to do today. And I'll see if you can see the pictures on my cell phone in the camera. We'll see if this will work. I have several cameras to choose from today. Let's see here. I'm going to lose my sound. Maybe we'll see. I have picked up one of the most beautiful, I don't know if you can see that. It's a hanging plant and it has all these little cone-shaped flowers that hummingbirds absolutely love. And there was a hummingbird flying around inside of my yard this morning. So I thought, why not do a hummingbird and maybe some flowers? What do you think? Think that's a good idea? You're on Maui, Carolyn. Is that why you didn't want to say? Because you didn't want to make us all feel jealous? That makes me want to do something Hawaiian themed. All right, so I'm going to set this aside as this is what makes it so I know you can hear me or not. I have no idea why the mic didn't work. That was bizarre. Yesterday was interesting as well when I went live on someone else's show. Being so used to doing my own show, I kind of messed up as the guest. So one of the things that you can do to ink is you can use a light tablet to transfer designs onto your garment. And so I'm going to kind of show you. We do offer this at creativefeet.com and it's called the Cutter Pillar Light Tablet. And there is a on-off switch down here that lets you 
turn it on so that you can see through fabric and you can draw through your fabric, but not directly on the mat. Rather, you use this product and this is what they call the glass or a glass mat. So you can tape your design to the back of this glass and you can ink right over this on your tablet and be able to see through it. Today, however, I am going to just wing it and I'm going to safely remove my tablet from my table because I didn't have time to design anything. However, whatever I ink today, I will create a image and a pattern and I'll put it in the school so you guys can ink if you want to do the same thing that I did. You can go ahead and ink that. This is, uh, I've been talking about this for a couple weeks, which is probably why you guys asked me to show it. And this is the next, well, eventually, because we have priorities that pop up. Uh, eventually this will be up for your viewing pleasure on our YouTube channel as an edited video. And then the VIP group inside of my school will have access to all 12 hours of the inking process of doing this. 12 hours is not going to happen today, you guys. <laughs> I'll leave this back here. All right, so I'm going to put my ultra. It hasn't been off my table since I got it. Yeah, put it somewhere safe. I also store pattern pieces underneath my mat. And it, this weighs about, oh, it's about 20, 20 pounds, maybe 18 pounds. And this is <laughs> my, pa my painting board or inking board for fabric painting to keep my surfaces clean beneath it. And also if I don't finish something, I can pick it up and set it somewhere out of the way so it doesn't get dirty or I can then switch to doing sewing. So this is a artist board. And at some point, if I ever want to, I can just paint over it and make it white again. But what I do to not have to paint it often is I remove, I'll move this mic a little bit out of the way so you don't have to hear that noise. I use the press and seal and stick it onto the board. Sorry about the noise, you guys. Hi, Pearl. Welcome. It's so nice to have you guys. You, my regulars, hang out with me each week. So I was trying to think of a way to express myself in one apron where I could put sewing and cooking and gardening and what else do I do? Art and kind of mix it all together in one apron. And I'm probably going to come up with a design like that for you guys. But I didn't have time today to do that. I know my press and seal is not far, but since I couldn't find it, I figured I'd just use regular old stretch wrap, as you can use this as well. It's just you may want to tape. And I'm really not worried about it because I could actually just paint over this board, as I said. It's a good idea when you, when you put something on a board like this to try not to have any wrinkles. It's kind of like la laying shelf paper down. You don't want to have any wrinkles on the surface. It will affect your artwork. So have any of you, did any of you do any of the projects that I've done live recently? Because you know what? I didn't see your posts in the school. Oh, you can't stay today, Pearl. Aw, you're going to a high school pageant? I could never go to any school performance without bringing tissue. There's something about watching kids perform. I don't care how old they get. It just it definitely pulls at the heartstrings for me. So 
So are any of you inking along with me? And if you don't know about the inks, we do offer them at creativefeet.com and we're bringing in the entire line of the Lemire fabric paint and or ink, um, the metallics and they should be in soon. In the meantime, our fabric creations ink line we, we got a lot of the colors in that we were out of. So if you wanted to order one at one point and you couldn't get it, you should check it out and see which ones we've got in since you may have tried to order. So I'm, I know this is the boring part, but it's a good idea for you guys to know how I handle it. So if you were just going to lay this down on your table, the ink will go through the fabric depending on how thick it is. And this, if you want to make your own apron and sew it, which I thought of doing that as well, the uh, fabric is like a gabardine or a broadcloth type of material. So they wash really well. If you get stains in it, it, it tends to release the stain a little bit better. But I know me, <laughs> and I am going to get stains on this. I'm going to get it dirty. So you know, I figure I should make it dirty to begin with, that way the dirt won't show. Now, one of my ideas was to take the bottom of the apron, and I'm sorry I didn't have time to iron this, <laughs> was to create flowers all along the bottom and have stems coming up and like a soft tone of flowers on the bottom. Would you like me to show you that? Or would you like me only to show you just like a, a detail on the top? And these are the questions I always ask, knowing what your answers will be. You make aprons, Amy? This one's pretty long. This one actually, well, I'm short. <laughs> so, you know, that, that has something to do with how long this is. But this one is, it's uh, just above my knee. So do you make them longer than that? That would be good so you could kneel in the dirt and then your knees won't get dirty. I got gardening on the brain. So I really want to do that effect on the bottom. And I'm going to fold it in half to do this because I'm going to use a wet technique for this. Oh, I left. I left something in the other room. This will give you guys an opportunity to go to creativefeet.com and click on the inks. Oh, I'm not supposed to be looking at this this way. Am I delaying it all? Is my mouth synced? All right, I'm not supposed to be able to. You don't have to know what I'm not supposed to do. But my son's all, your computer can't handle that. Don't do that. And I was doing it. All right, good. What is this? I should not be in there. Where is that coming up? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I just don't want to have a, have you, oh, I know what that is. Okay, everything's good. We're good to go now. Boy, it looks so dark up there. Doesn't that look dark? It looked really light earlier. And I'm going to run in the other room so I can show you, because I totally forgot to bring it in here.
without water. Okie dokie. Whoopsie. <laughs> and I have this beautiful board here that I do not want. I do not want it to get dirty. So I'm going to move this off. I did this more for the photo this morning. Fun things to have for inking, especially for this, depending on how you how far you want to go into it, like I'm doing. To hang to your knees in your five eight. Well, I would be. It would be mid shin. <laughs> I'm five three. That'd be five inches longer. There we go. You can use trims that you have. You can take lace. Do any of you have lace in your sewing arsenal? You can lay lace out on your apron and spray through the lace and it will give you a ink or an inky lacy appearance on the fabric. Wouldn't that be pretty? And then you can also take trims and this is like a floral trim. And I was thinking about laying some of these down on the fabric and spraying over it to create a really neat look and so that's definitely going to happen let's see i'll snip some off it doesn't have to be wasted trim either because whatever color they end up i can then sew them on to something else i can even sew these on to the actual apron afterward I have a feeling this is going to be really cool and quick a really neat technique you're crocheting a rug wow blissful acres off grid homestead welcome what's your name name you're like better days I don't know what your name is unless you tell me. Okay. So I have some skewers for barbecuing. I have some popsicle sticks. That one was used already and glued. And, <laughs> and then I have some toothpicks. You do that with glaze on clay. I miss working with clay. I gotta not forget I want this thing to stay clean. So let me move it before I go too far into this. By the way, if you guys like to do stamp stamping with paperwork, paperwork, <laughs> paper art for like scrapbooking and stuff, you can use those with this ink as well. Uh. I'm already having fun. I'm in my ink mode or my art mode. Getting a board like this is also an option for doing inking. It's more for photography for us. Do any of you have your puppies nearby? My little Tinkerbell is asleep on her chair right next to me. Okay. Now, I have some dirty, very dirty looking containers that I use because I'm an artist and uh, I like to use jelly jars for my water and I generally will have four and I will start with one jar as my first rinsing. And before I even rinse, I will take my really, you know, dirty brush and dip it really quick and then wipe it off on a napkin or a paper towel. And then, and then do that again, never really swishing the brush 
to just try to keep the water as clean as long as long as possible. Now what you see on this napkin is what kind of a spray I'm going to get from this bottle of water. So or of ink that I mixed and I, I mixed this a long time ago. So whenever you get a spray bottle, it's a good idea to see the pattern that it's going to spray. And doesn't that look like a flower, you guys? I think it does. It's not the right color, but it's a good pattern for a subtle technique. And I have these little glass bowls that I like to use as well to mix or dilute inks down. So I'm probably going to use some of that today. And then here's my cute little doilies. Got those in a bowl, all ready to be used. And this is my favorite thing for, for working with inks. I believe it was a tray that they were selling last summer for entertaining outdoors, and it's the lid, and it's just fabulous for this. It's a giant palette, and I can just rinse it in the sink after I'm finished. And then of course a good functioning clean water only spray bottle to get your fabric wet. And we want, and I, I like to do that, run my fingers along to see that I am diluting or getting this fabric as wet as possible. I don't always work wet with the ink, but what we're trying to do this time, I want it to be a really subtle appearance. This reminds me of when my children were young and every Saturday I would have them bring their friends over and we would have Art Saturday. Except for you guys aren't in the room with me. Feel free to ask questions if you have any at this point. I'm gonna see if anyone new popped in. Red Dog Mama, welcome. And I think that's it. Oh, God. I used batting yesterday and it's still flowing, floating <laughs> in the air. All right, so what I can do here is lay these sticks down on top to create a different look for I don't want the points though on the top I'm gonna flip it over and you see how they're they're different heights and different angles because branches if they're blowing in the wind they're not usually straight and then and sometimes there'll be a, a bigger one a bigger one here bigger one there but not necessarily the same height all the way down want to have it stagger And then we've got, you know, some little ones and we can, we can go like this to create branches. Ew, I got ink under my nail. It looks awful. So is this, do you think you guys can handle this? If you don't feel like you're artistic, you may, may feel like I can definitely do that. And while I... This is a green and this, these stems should be the elements that's green. I'm doing a kind of a watercolor look to this. So I'm just spraying. Just like this, about six inches away. And you can see how, because I'm so far away, it's not doing that circular design because I'm I'm far enough away to where the spray dispenses itself out and I'm going to want it darker on the bottom. You can see how fast a result or how quickly you can get a really neat result with this. And I really want it to be darker on the bottom as I mentioned. So sprayed over that. Now we just lift these up.
You can also get leaves out of your yard and have put leaves on the ends of those to help you to know how to draw a leaf. I just gotta flip it over and do a similar design on this side. Are you guys having fun? I am. I feel like this is like a school project. Let's see. Okay, so this one being taller would be good. This one being a little shorter. And at an angle. Oopsie, there we go. And there. So now you know what my toothpicks and popsicle sticks are for. Remember the fabric is wet first with water and I, it feels like it's not as wet as it, I'd like it on this side. Can you imagine making a quilt fabric this way? How quickly you could ink your fabric to create the look that you want. And now we have a pattern to follow. <laughs> and I suspected that the crease would look a little bit different. So I'm going to put another one there. I promise this will get more technical. I just want the people, those of you that don't have or don't feel like you have artistic skills that you can accomplish what we're doing here. All right. It's all wet and working with inking is similar to working with watercolors. If you've ever worked with watercolors, you know that you have, you have to like start with white and work your way backwards. So leave the white white and then proceed. Won't that be cute to actually add afterward? Oh, I think it will. All right, I don't have another bottle like this. So I'm going to, I'm going to dump it. But I'm not going to waste it because I, I have trouble wasting things. I'm just going to pour it in here. This is the lime color of the Fabric Creations, Soft Fabric Inks. And I put some water in a bowl. And try to clean it out. Of course, you could run to the sink. <laughs> I'm trying to do it all from my chair here. Okay, so that I can use for later. What color should the flowers be? Oh, there's this just like, oh my goodness. Here I go having to make decisions again. I need you guys to help me. These are going to be the centers of the flowers. What color should I make my flowers? We got some red and... Oh, I know what color you guys are going to want. <laughs> You're going to want purple, aren't you? How many of you? Yeah, purple. <laughs> okay, so let me find a really pretty purple. This one's really pretty. This is dark, dark purple. And this is the one of the Lemures. It's a pearlescent violet, which right now we don't have yet, but we will. We're waiting on it to arrive. And then this is... Halo blue gold. 
And that is a good way to, to identify whether or not you're going to like something is to put it on your fabric and then take a picture with your cell phone and then look at it in, with your cell phone. See if you like what you've got there. My favorite color. <laughs> I have to put my favorite color in there as well. Of course, a hummingbird would be really nice on the top. So this is the bottom of the apron. I have a hard time bringing some words out. That's one of them. This is something that we will be bringing on as well. And this, this is, uh, it has like an oil base to it. But it has a really unique look to it, which I will show you in another project. It's, uh, this will be more like for branches. Where's my purple? I have more than one. That one's, this one doesn't have any metallic in it. You can also use speedball block printing ink on fabric. Except for this also, I believe, has that oil base. It has more sustainability, though. So it's, a, it's another option. We don't have this yet, either. This is like a green. Where's my eyelac? All right. Are you guys ready to vote or should I just paint and then you guys just have to accept whatever I do. I think I'm going to put the purple into the spray bottle. I'm not going to mix a lot though. You should always have something to wipe your hands off with and know that this is ink and it will stain whatever you're wearing. And I'm wearing something that has all different colors. It's my go-to art outfit. Here we go. I like to save the paper lids to keep it fresher in the container. They don't always succeed at doing that though. Okay, so we're gonna add some water. I know I brought some. Well, it wouldn't be a normal Thursday. I was gonna say Saturday. <laughs> You're accepting of whatever I want to do today. That's not like you guys. Where is it? There it is. I should really rinse it, but purple's a stronger color, so I'm sure it will dilute the green. And green and purple are complementary colors to one another. I don't need a lot and put a little on the end of my paintbrush and kick it in there and I think I'll do one one more. So it not not very much goes quite a long way. And we're with a lot of art you wouldn't want to shake it and then use it right away. Where with this it doesn't really matter. And we're gonna test the spray again get past the green. It's not strong enough. Although that's kind of neat to kind of make a background appearance. All right, here we go. 
This is when I want my music running for you guys. I am going to wear this, absolutely. So these are be like, you're going to see that these will be voids of the flowers. So I'm just going to kind of really, I want different levels of color anyway. That's almost too little. Yeah, definitely need to add more. So if any of you are disappointed, I'm not sewing today. I'm sorry that I'm not sewing today, but it is fabric related. I thought about doing some embroidery after on it, but I know myself, I'm gonna go probably too long and I had to put the machine away to film the inking there. So this is going to be from a distance. I don't like how it's spraying. Should have tested it first. Forget it would do the same pattern it just did on the paper towel. I did test it first. It's not done till it's done. I don't know if you can see that even though I did a very fine mist, that there is the implication of flowers. You guys see that? See that? Isn't that nice? So another way to do that without a spray bottle. Do you guys want to know what where I got this lace? Or these this trim? It's a uh, W-Y-L-A, by the spool, and I probably picked it up at a Joann's. Another way to, to do this, and these are one of our brushes, we do have a set of three brushes that helps you to, uh, to know that you're using the right kind of brush for inking. Watercolor brushes work really well. I wouldn't use the white synthetics for this. What am I going to do now? What color? So that purple to me is like really strong in my mind anyway. This is the pearlescent turquoise number 571. And it is so pretty. I should have said springtime. This is kind of a more of a springtime thing, isn't it, with flowers? Hi, Nikki. This is something good to learn, isn't it? And if you've ever made a project and you couldn't find a fabric to match it, you can match your fabrics using this. And, uh oh, I forgot to turn off the phones.
I muted the sound so you guys didn't have to endure the phone ringing. Sorry about that if I made you wonder. And so this is, remember the fabric is wet and the ink is also wet. Now I'm just doing little dots and this kind of implies that there are flowers past or in the distance. And you want some bigger, some smaller. So the lighter the tap, the smaller the flower. The longer you sit, it, depending on how much you have on your brush, the bigger your flower will be. And I couldn't do this. And now I have flowers. Instant flowers. <laughs> Boy, I did not even get in close to center on that one. Did I do this already? No. Nope. And then of course, the good old fashioned, put it on the brush and tap it. Now those, oh gosh, I'm just, I'm already really liking it, you guys. I wish the, the color was, or the lighting was better in here. I don't know if it's, if you're seeing it as nicely as I am. And then you can also do, take the, I got something in the way, let's see. This is something that I picked up at, uh, I can't remember where, but I think it was Joann's. And they had a whole bunch of these seat that nest within one another for a very, on a coupon, it was a steal. Here we go. So now I have my fan brush, which is one of my favorite brushes for art because we can create the look of, we can create different looks with it. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to be quiet, Claire. So I'm just going to kind of tap it and going up. Light touches. You can see that I barely used any of this color and it is just striking. So see how I'm going up on some of them. I'm going further than on others. Are any of you going, I want to do this. This looks like so much fun. Come on, you guys. I can't hear your wows. And if you don't type them, I don't know you're going, ooh. Uh, I really want to make a quilt and have the whole quilt be inked every piece of fabric correlate okay so here's another way of going about this is to take the flower and drop it in I know I had my tweezers ready to go Oh well, my fingers are getting dirty. And then you can just set the flower down. Pick it up. And those of you who make stamps, your own stamps, know that this could be another option for you. Now I only wet the top of those or the ends of one of like five of those so that I create the look of a, a different kind of flower. So far I've only used three colors, but you can't tell that, can you? Because 
depending on how diluted the ink is and how long you set it down and determines how more how vivid it is or how much it stands out okay probably have done enough of that color even though I love it another thing that I like to to do is to make things look or you you want to have colors kind of blend with one another so if you take a color and you add another color to that color then they they become hue alike if that makes any sense I'm not sure if I'm using very good terminology I'm gonna hang on to that for a minute though because I think this will make pretty branches so this is a skewer again and good way to test something is always test it on paper towel first see what you're gonna get Kind of like a foxtail. It's a little strong. Why not? It's just an apron. <laughs> it's a very, very strong color with that subtleness behind it. And that would normally look like a mess, but you can just have it be another one. Coming off. I'm not gonna do very many of these cause I'm not liking it, but I probably will in the end. This is by the way, metallic copper number 564. What do you think? Are those working now? Now that there's more than one. I feel like a chicken needs to be running around in there. Do you guys? <laughs> you like it, Eve? Thank you. Sometimes I dilute the ink, sometimes I don't. So this is straight ink right out of the bottle. And it's because of that that you can that you can, that even though like one bottle is really like ten different colors, depending on how diluted you make it, determines how dark it is. So all I'm doing. All I'm doing is just pushing down sideways on it. The end of a skewer is tapered all on its own. And that's how it's creating that tapered looking leaf. Yeah, I think we'll do one more of these. Okay, that's enough of that one. That one stressed me out a little bit. Is this fun, you guys? Are you ready to give it a try? But now I have to be really mindful because these, these are going to take longer to dry. And I was going to bring a blow dryer in here, but with all the lights I have on, I thought I might turn the power off right in the middle. 
so I chose not to and I think I used this no I used this one before you see how nice those go together halo blue with pearlescent turquoise my some of my favorite colors oh, okay so i'm really liking it just how it is and i could go to the top so this is just the bottom of the apron i just wanted to give it some life instead of only doing the top of the apron and i didn't want to get stuck stuck with the one particular look on the apron and I can always now focus on the top and bring those colors down into here after I have come up with whatever design I'm going to do on the top of the apron or we can call this done and I can say thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed learning how to ink the bottom of your apron <laughs> I just want those to dry. Let's see. That's so pretty, you guys. Don't you think? And then having a little brown would be good. In case I get my knee in the dirt because I'm so short that this apron can hit the, the dirt. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of brown to the bottom, which would be down there because there's dirt on the ground. And it's still damp, but not really wet. Make sure your straps aren't getting under there. Unless you want your straps to be the same as the bottom. There we go. These are the, yes, they're, they're all really soft. I tested them all. In the VIP group, we did a inking testing day and everything was really soft. Now the metallic will be less soft, but it is not stiff. It's just that the needle, if you were to run a needle through that, you might need to use a foot with the Octi hoops. It's a good idea to shake your inks before you use them. So I think I'm going to add the brown to the blue. But before I do that, I want more. It's my favorite color. And you can do a toothbrush technique if you like. I know a lot of people think that's really cool you take a toothbrush and you run your thumb on it but you're gonna get this under your nail doing that so in my world there's more teal in my world than purple Take it up. All right. Do some more dots. Okay. So we've got lots of flowers that are off in the distance. And you can use that as a guide to actually paint a flower over that flower that you did with the lace 
which is kind of what I was going to show you on on the branches as well, which is why I got to get the brown going. Now this time I'm not going to dilute it as much and I'm diluting it with the color that was already there, which will make it have a similar hue to the blue that was in there. Water. Okay, so this is going to be pretty strong. Test it out. And this is a line brush. Starting at the bottom and working my way up, it will become, it'll be thicker on the bottom and it will get thinner as I go up. And I was putting my pinky down as I was sliding up to help me to do that straight. Once again, we're gonna come down at the bottom Crisscross over and now come over. And now I'm going to do some branches at an angle, but going up, not going straight out. So just a few of these where I had the white lines created by me doing laying down the, um, what do you call those? The pokers. Hi, Fiona. I really didn't have a plan today, so you guys are getting a, whatever Claire wants to do today, day. <laughs> I guess you're kind of getting the idea that even if you're messy, it's okay. And we can also flick some of the brown. Oh, my board is not here. I'm getting that on my sewing table. <laughs> no! We want the mud that we kneel on when we're gardening to blend in with the art and no one will know that we were messy people. Uh oh. I'm going to have to figure out how to get a blow dryer in here without short circuiting the electricity. I may just uh, have to put you guys on hold or have a commercial break while I run and dry that copper. Or I just stay down here and turn this into a forest. Now I wish I didn't do those copper ones at all. And so you'll see that even an experienced artist goes through those kind of feelings. But I will not allow myself to give up. Mostly because it's just taking so long to dry. I'm going to incorporate that into a tree. 
So if I can blend it out and make it softer. No one will even know they were there. Oh no, it looks so muddy now. <laughs> However, we can do something like put flowers on top of that or add more purple because everything's better with purple, right? And I really do want to be able to get muddy. So this is actually going to be fine. Making all your purple purple desires happy right now with adding some purple flowers. I don't know if you can see that very well. But I'm going to take them outside of that as well. So this is like a, a pushing down with the brush. Always rotating your brush around like this so that the petals end up with the same shape. If you don't, you end up with a, a weird shaped petal, which with all of these different elements in here, no one's going to know because it's going to be so much detail. I'm going to take a different brush though now and kind of rough this up. <laughs> We're going to smudge it up a little bit. It's a bigger tree. When I'm all done, you won't even know those were there. And the reason I had to do that is because they smeared all on their own. Are any of you wondering if I'm going to make it look good in the end? All right. Got to do more of the trees with the line brush again. Going up where it was white. That's right. You're the only one who knows what you had planned before you began. So you're the only one who knows whether or not you made a mistake. And know this, that every painting I've ever done, I've put a mistake in there. I deliberately do not do an absolutely perfect work of art ever. Not that I'm capable or anyone's capable of perfection in anything but it's to show respect that it creates a, a, oh no, I really got it. should have done that. I'm going to mute you guys. That won't happen again. Time to hydrate, everybody. I did eat lunch before I went live, in case any of you are worried about me not eating, because sometimes I have been pretty hungry by the time I'm done. 
And this is again my vitamin C packet in water. So what color should I use next, you guys? Did any of you get like upset when you saw me smudge the brown? I want to know. Do a thumbs up if you did. If it like made you go, oh no, she ruined it At, in, on any level. I just want to know. I'm not trying to stress you out. I promise. So pinky down and slide up, kind of wobbly on purpose. Crisscrossing over. There we go. So now I'm going to take and I'm going to add more of the brown trees. I'm having a good day. Every day is a good day when I'm hanging out with you guys. We need some more spots, some more big brown spots. There we go. If we get mud on our apron in the garden and somebody knocks at the door, you don't have to worry. It's art. It's supposed to be muddy. When I look at the at the camera, it looks like, oh no, oh no, oh no. So I gotta fix that. And you can see the purple is still not dry and it's starting to bleed a little bit. I need to make more little purple flowers, don't I? Can't have enough purple flowers for the purple lovers in the group. So see how I rotate my wrist around? You can also do some that are where the flower is pointing down and you, I did that the wrong way. I'll show you that in a second. So we would just go one petal, two petals, three petals and then the top is half of a circle and then it looks like the petal is hanging down. I don't want you guys thinking I don't like purple because I do like purple. So don't feel like I'm putting all this purple on there and you guys are the reason. I just wore purple a lot for many, many, many years and kind of got overdone on it. But there's a reason the Creative Feet logo and just about the entire website is purple and teal is because those are my two favorite colors and I love them together. No, 
I'm going to do some smaller ones as they go higher up. Let's see, the top view looks better. I really need to dilute some of this and I'm going to dilute some with the brown too. So now you can see that that brown is a different color brown than that brown by just having a little purple in there. I think I'm going to add another bit of purple to this. Dry off that so I don't get brown in my purple. And now you can see it's kind of a plum color. And that is part of the secret to art is having colors be different shades or hues, different shades of one another. Now we're gonna now we're pushing these are small flowers that are far off in the distance and they're a little bit different shade than that, which makes it more believable. When you're using a long brush to, to tap, you should make sure your brush is going upright if you want your dots to fly upright. I feel like I need a little more water in here, but not too much. And when we want to control how much water you pour into something, use a brush to do it. It always makes me a little nervous to do all this inking around my sewing machine, you guys. So is that brown mess starting to fade away from memory? What am I doing? No, I want to add more water. Just a little. There we go. It is very similar. It's pretty much all the things you learned about watercolor you can apply to inking. You can use ice cubes and salt and do all kinds of different effects using the same processes you use for watercolor. It's amazing how damp this fabric still is. So now you can see that kind of looks like leaves too. Purple's a good shadow color. And I got something going on here that I did not expect. Uh oh. See that? <laughs> But it kind of looks neat, doesn't it? It actually kind of looks like I meant to do that. I don't mind it. Do you mind that? I don't mind it at all. But I do mind that I'm getting my sewing table all dirty. So I'm going to try to do a bit more of that. See, 
if I can get to where you guys can see better. So this is that lime green that I had and kind of works, doesn't it? getting hard to work on both ends of this at the same time because I'm not organized well. I'm going to move some stuff around so I stop struggling. So where I started out working just here, I've now expanded to all of this whole area and the board is only so big. And I really expected the fabric to dry a little quicker than it is. Has watercolor paper gotten really expensive? I haven't, I haven't used it. I haven't done it in a long time. I used to give, I used to make my own cards as a child. Doing, using watercolor techniques. And then for those of you who don't know, I was a professional artist. I painted 40 to 100 paintings a day as a reproduction artist. And that may sound unbelievable or impossible, but it was. 12 hour days, Monday through Thursday at a studio called Vanguard Studios in California, in Ventura, California. It was a long time ago. My brother Charles, who passed away, I think he was 30, um, also was an artist at the same studio and we used to paint together. Hi Chase. Oh boy. Every once in a while he has to say hi. Just don't spill anything. Okay. Hello Chase. There's, oh, I know. I must have said something that made him made him think it was supposed to be his turn yeah you good boy yeah okay now go go on scoot <laughs> 120 pound watercolor paper it's expensive i even made my own paper over the t over the years that was kind of fun have any of you ever made your own paper Did you know you can? More splattering. Splattering is your best friend because it makes it so your mistakes don't show up as much. But I am trying to make it similar to the other side, even though this will be around my, the back. Well, I guess if anyone was looking from the back, they would see both sides. I'm really enjoying this, so I hope you're having as much fun as I am. The only thing that would be more fun for you guys is if you guys were doing this along with me. Are any of you doing anything creative right now? If you are, tell me in the comments. As you know, the YouTube algorithm loves it if you guys interact in the chat, and I love knowing how you guys are feeling about it. I think we need more purple flowers. And I really like how the purple flowers are bleeding and it's leaving metallic, a metallic reflection and then the purple is smearing out. I'm enjoying that look. It would be upsetting if I did not like or want that kind of look right now. And the fabric isn't very damp anymore. So that'll happen less as it dries. Little flowers out here. Oh, that 
that was a terrible flower. So when I'm doing these petals, I'm just kind of pushing down on the brush. Trying to figure out which camera angle is best for you guys to see this. And not all the petals are the same size, or not all the flowers are the same size. Whoopsie. <laughs> Some of my flowers are really wonky. It's a good thing no one will ever be able to tell. So do you like the idea of painting the bottom of the apron? I'm actually thinking about doing a shirt this way. It'll probably be a filmed video. I'm going to actually show you how to make the shirt as well. So we'll be inking the entire fabric for the shirt. Because if you don't know that this ink is washable, it is washable. And I've used this on a wide variety of synthetics as well. I'm going to go up really high with one of these. This is starting to look like a field of wildflowers. Try not to paint and then have to put your hand down. <laughs> Don't do what I'm doing. Ooh, I should put a butterfly in here, shouldn't I? I was thinking about a hummingbird, but maybe some butterflies would be better. What kind of butterfly would you guys want if I did a butterfly? We have yellow monarchs here. They're bright yellow. So I'm doing, once again, just the circles or just the dots. Mixing the brown with the purple. I think we need more color. Going up into the pockets. Teal or blue butterfly? You still want a hummingbird, though, huh? <laughs> not just a butterfly. You're not allowed to change your mind, Claire. This is a big project. 
I really wanted the bottom to be more subtle and then have the detail be on top. But now I'm thinking, wouldn't this be fun? The pocket. Wouldn't the pocket be fun if it looked like wood, like a fence going, going across? I don't know. We'll see if I end up wearing this. If I make it too much, then I might be like, wow, no one will know unless I go out in public wearing it, right? Tell you what, it's kind of fun though to have a one of a kind garment to wear. You'll never show up at a party wearing what someone else has if you ink your own fabric. Isn't it fun, just a dot, and then you sit there, and now it has a totally different look. And that's the metallic on the brush. The metallic in the, is in the center, leaving behind that different looking center. <laughs> oh, that was really intelligent sounding. I still see these blobs of ew. Need to fix it. All right, I know what I need to do to make that not as obvious. It's amazing how this works. It's one of the things that made me fall in love with the metallic from this company is how it's like you're laying down two different inks at the same time. Just by how you use the brush. All right, so I think the only way around that copper looking good is by adding more copper, but I'm not giving into that yet. I'm going to go a, against the watercolor concept and use some white. You wanna limit the amount of white you use if you're going to embroider or quilt through an ink, but this isn't going to be quilted, so. I can add white to this and fabric's already kind of a firm material anyway, so I think I'm fine with using some white. However, the Lemure whites are more interesting. We have some pearlescent. Uh oh. So we have opaque white and the pearlescent white. And then this is the white that we have for the Fabric Creations inks. And then there is this kind of creamy color one, which I think will make sure you shake it. Pink, you want some pink? I think we could add pink. And some pearlescent pink. And we also have neon pink. Definitely a good idea to shake it. And before I started filming, I only shook a few, so bear with me. And you might think that this is too bright, but adding this to another shade of pink gives you like, you know, in between pops of color. 
And we also have the neon in the uh, fabric creations as well in uh, some of the colors. All right, let's go for some more. All right, what to do, what to do. I think I'm gonna throw some neon pink in with this purple. Making it a muddy color. A muddy neon, look how bright that is. Woo. I know which butterfly you guys are picturing if you want that blue butterfly. I'm going to have to pull it up on a screen and look at it, I think. to I could do some implications of some butterflies in the distance as well. So I was thinking, you know, these are trees, but maybe they're not trees. Maybe they're just wildflowers. Wildflowers come in a variety of different shapes and sizes. And to have the distance reflected in this, then you would have you know, some of these be straight neon. Not all of them would be that bright. And we'll bring in some opaque white put a little in here I will move up from the bottom but not yet <laughs> this is the goal I don't like how those bronze things look yet so once I have that worked out this is wet down here, and that's why I'm staying down here so long. If it doesn't dry in a reasonable amount of time, I'm just going to have to leave you guys for a minute and go blow dry it. That was more than I wanted. Ah, messy fingers. So we're basically just having fun. It's like my son said, sometimes you just need to go in there and just do whatever you want. Take your time and Really, he wants me to do video where I blow you away. So we'll see when that comes. Today I'm, I'm feeling tired, so... I'm just trying to really enjoy the process. I also need a place where I can do art without risking my sewing machine. So these darker shades are down in the shadow area where you can't see as much. So the colors are in the shadows that makes them darker. Then you can go ahead and 
add some pops of the bright color where the sunlight is managing to shine on some of them. And then you can bring white in to that and add even more. It looks like a candy cane color. I'd make that nice nail polish color. <laughs> All right. So there I took the pink and I dipped in with the green and it made like a yellow, like an orangish yellow. And since that was a unique thing, I'm going to go all the way across before it doesn't do that anymore. And that's a surprise for me to get neon pink with the green to make orange. Surprise, surprise. That's the kind of thing you'll, you're likely to forget if you don't duplicate it right away. It would have been easier if I just on the top of the apron. <laughs> but see, because we're using the same colors to muddy up the next color is why you don't really have to worry that that orange will blend in with all the rest because it will because it's of the same parent color. Too thick, Claire. Too wet. There we go. You love it so much, good. I want you guys to enjoy. I just want those brown areas to stop bothering me. See how that's different than over here. So I'm gonna add some of that to this. Although in nature, what we plant different colors of our of our flowers in our garden, don't we? We wouldn't necessarily have all of the same flower. I don't know if you guys would you guys think of the pockets being like a little fence. Did any of you respond to that? Oh, one of you said yes. It is whimsical, isn't it? Whoops. Oh, gosh, I got so many things going on. I'm like, please don't let me spill anything. I never would have thought this would make orange. Little dot here and a little dot there. The other night an owl woke me up. At first I thought they were doves. And also we had a very exciting new visitor in the garden. It, it was a yellow magpie which is not something I've ever seen here. And I have a squirrel. I've lived here for over 22 years and 
I don't recall ever seeing a squirrel in my particular neighborhood. So for me, I know some of you are like, oh no, squirrels, run. You don't want those in your garden. Um, I absolutely love them. And when I was a child, my mother brought in a, a nest had fallen out of our palm tree in California. So we raised a family of baby squirrels and that was a delightful experience. One of my fondest memories of childhood. So you see how I'm, I don't know if you're seeing that close. Let me see if the close camera gives you a better idea. So I have a darker orange beneath and then not going on the same the same area, not the same dots. In other words, I've done dark orange dots. Now, now I'm going to do middle dots, middle color, mid-tone. And then I go into light and bringing them closer to the center of this actual flower-ish looking thing. <laughs> I just spent some time at a garden center and it really was just lovely in there. They had music playing, classical music streaming through it and the breeze was perfect and they had so many different varieties of flowers in there so it brought so much joy to me I thought maybe I can bring a little of that to you today. We're always doing sewing related things, but getting outside is so good for us too. This is kind of what being in that garden center is like. I'm just looking at seeing what you guys are writing. You live in Squirrel Hill in Pittsburgh? And they're detrimental to your plants? Do they, they're helpful? Or they are deadly? <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking I need to make squirrel furniture and like make a little picnic, a picnic table so that the squirrel can come have lunch with me. But I haven't seen him again. I only saw him one day. Do some of the darker color one again. Dot to dot. And notice that my pinky, oops, <laughs> my pinky is is always down when I'm doing details like this. So while the brush is going down, my pinky is also going down. That keeps me from losing my way. Now the next color up. And now I'm going to put some of the very lightest color on the top edge to kind of imply that the sun is there. Get a little white in there. And I can also like add a little to these purple flowers. Just down in the centers. Can you guys see on that top, on that close up? I thought this would be a really good angle, but I'm not sure. Oh, I got a song in my head. Oh no. It's that one again, isn't it, you guys? The chicken dance. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. That's what the song that plays in my head is the chicken dance. pink down here. Yeah, 
It's a wild flower explosion. I still don't like these areas. That's a long time for me to go before fixing a problem with art. I'm getting very relaxed. What sounds bad? I don't know if any of you are doing anything creative today. I have some plants to trans transplant later today or tomorrow or Saturday. We'll see. But I know what I'm going to wear when I do my gardening. So I got to finish this today in order to use it. Dot, 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 dot. Uh-oh, the dog is getting ready to bark. I'm going to add a dot of pink to the center of each one of these purple ones. Sometimes my dog scares the living daylights out of me. I wonder where that term came from. <laughs> my mom used to say that a lot. Oh no, you just scared the living daylights out of me. So now I'm doing a brush technique for flowers, which is kind of not going to do a lot of those, but because you guys want butterflies. Somebody wants a butterfly. Blue butterfly, if I remember correctly. Although the blue butterfly might just drown, get drowned out in this. I don't know. I think I'm... I think I've done enough on... Well, let's see. I think it's lost some of its green. <laughs> and the green is now an orange ish kind of wash color. It needs more green, doesn't yeah. it? Does it need a butterfly? Shouldn't I just do that kind of stuff on the top, you guys? I need white. It's amazing how hard it is to camouflage that copper.
we're doing lots and lots and lots of flowers. What time is it? Four o'clock, two hours. I kind of feel the two hour time hit me. The longest I went without really stopping on an art piece it was like 20 hours. I could not stop. I stopped just to eat and use the bathroom. Ah, maybe just splatter. Regular water. Running out of regular water. Here we go. Cobalt, cobalt green or deep green for tiny grass. It's a good idea. Whoopsie. Just want to break up this little blobby look. I guess what it is is that there's brown then there's green and there's brown and there's green and there's brown then there's green and I think we need Let's see what color next this is a pretty green this is the turquoise color, which I believe we're still out of this one. They had a really pretty green in, in the other line, too. is quite different than everything that's there. And now what I'm dealing with is now the fabric isn't wet anymore. If I wet it, then I can't get to the top. That kind of looks neat. I'm liking that. Okay. We have a winner. Well, I just totally dirtied up that brush and uh, got it all the way into the frog. No, not the frog. I have I have I play cello and I always get the the bow confused with the brush construction. So I'm leaving it really thick for the center of the purple flowers. Do a few of these to imply that all the purple flowers have this green center. Is anybody else getting so relaxed they want a nap? Have I put any of you to sleep? <laughs> I get emails and uh, other ways of communication from people. Going, you put me to sleep every week. Your voice puts me to sleep. You should do videos for helping people go to sleep at night. <laughs> All 
All right, let's see here. Da 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 da. Uh oh. Okay, so now I'm going to, to continue with that, but I'm going to use a fan brush because it's bigger. And I'm going to bring this up from the bottom. And every now and then go up higher. And I'm happy too because I love this color. <laughs> All right, I think we're almost done with the bottom because it's like a little bit boring. And if I'm going to do detail for you guys, I'm going to do it on the top. What do you think? Is it still really distracting for you guys? It's not a painting. It's a piece of fabric. Should I stop or do you want me to go on? I got a mess. If I continue, I have to kind of straighten up a little bit. And I need to dry this. So I would normally leave that for you guys to look at while walking off and drying it, but I got to take it with me to dry it. So instead I'll have you look at the fish and it's a good time for you guys to get a snack, drink some water. I never just do something that takes two hours, do I? I'm going to leave the bottom not not clear kind of wanted that subtle look I didn't want it to look detailed I want to have a detail on the bodice part alright so it shouldn't take too long to dry this it's not that wet I'll be back in a bit And this was 12 hours to paint. It is fabric. And think about it, canvas is flower. No, canvas is fabric as well, isn't it?
know if you can't really see it. There, we'll just pretend that's where it ends. There you go. Still a little damp. <laughs> this is some thick material. Now for the pocket. Put this somewhere safe because one day I'm going to quilt through that with you guys. Here we go. Are you guys still with me? You think it has a modern look, huh? <laughs> yeah, you could do polka dots. Really easy, by the way. All you need is some coins. All right. I'm not hearing myself. But that doesn't mean anything. Okay, I want to do some straight lines and you might have... <laughs> I forgot to remove that. I'm back. <laughs> I'm going to use these to help me do some straight separations between. Hi, Tinkerbell. Can you be? Let's sit up here. Here's Tinkerbell. Want to lay down? If you lay down, everyone will see you lay down, and you don't even know you're on film. Do you want to lay down? <laughs> There's my little one who's always with me in the garden. You want me to put you on your chair? She's like, why'd you go back in here? We were in the other room together. <laughs> they do get disappointed when I leave the room and come back. Each time they think that I'm done for the day. So then I'm going to use that and I'm going to use a fan brush and some brown. And I'm going to try not to have to get the fabric that wet. Let's see what we got here. Got my hand on that steady. It's not very good mixed up. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> it's a good thing I am good at making a mess look like not a mess. So we're definitely going to have some brown going all along here. I have I have been really bad about following the directions with the inks on purpose. So I'm going to do a knot here. So you see I just swirled the, the brush. And we'll do another one here. I 
I'm a mess. So this is a crease in the fabric. Had I not, had I ironed this before I started, then I wouldn't have gotten that, that thick area right there. I'm going to take this up. Try to make it look like green. To be safe, you should heat set. Some materials are better than others at, at holding this ink in. And the blow dryer is good at drying, but if you're going to heat set, you'll want to use the iron and you can then throw it in the dryer as well. This is dry fabric, so it's reacting different, but the ink is really diluted. I'm going to add a little of the orange tone that I got from mixing the green with the neon. I'm going to have to get it wet, I think. I, uh, I did them two parallel to one another, so it kind of looks like knees. So keep that in mind when you're doing something like this to not... Whoopsie. Is it looking like a fence? There we go. This is just too big of a brush to do that. Well, let's see if I got a smaller fan brush. I have some super tiny fan brushes because they're just, they come in handy so much. And we'll be adding more brushes to our website soon. This one's really small. So this one can make really small knots, but the paint's too wet. So not a good choice. All right, I'm getting hot and I'm getting hungry and I ate, so. It's probably best to stick with the same brush so you get the same look all the way across.
It's too quiet in here. Where, why aren't you guys making more noise? Turning the air down. Gotta love these nest thermostats so you can use your cell phone to set your heat and air. So I'm pretty sure that even without heat setting, the, this will just, this will stay. After all my testing. I getting too quiet for you guys? So you can see I'm using the side of this stick to guide for a perfectly straight line keeping the stick over the white to keep it from going into that, which it's not doing a perfect job, but I didn't expect it to because it's because I have the ink set to a wash consistency. But you can use that also to create more lines going down. Boy, I'm never this quiet. I hope I'm not being too boring, you guys. You're welcome, Fiona. My son says uh, you're welcome as well. And uh, know that we have a lot of plans coming up. I have to get caught up on filming. I have this tendency to go right in the middle like it's got a knee. Okay. Still think this is a good idea, you guys? It rolled over and now I don't have a line. It's like having a bad board in your fence. I need to talk like Bob Ross. I think there's a bunny rabbit behind that fence. It's your world 
And any little thing could be. I think there's some praying mantises in there. Peeking through right there. So it's kind of like a dry brush technique, even though the paint is wet, I'm like very lightly skimming the fabric so that it leaves gaps. Definitely more enjoyable for me to have the fabric be wet. But there's still hope to make this look better than it does right now. I'm mixing on top of the apron. <laughs> Not your best option. So I'm going to add some orange to kind of warm up this brown a little bit. Put a little purple in there. Not much. Oops. Can't waste purple. One more. So you can see sometimes I use two brushes to mix, kind of like scrambling eggs. All right, I'm going to wet the fabric just a little bit. Not a lot because I want to be able to do the top before we go too late. So now that has more of a wood color. And what we did before was we set in our shadows. Now we're going to add a little bit of more earthy feel to the to the wood. What would be behind this fence, you guys? What color? Am I talking too soft? Because I can't tell. <laughs> I always feel like you guys are sitting here with me in the room. And sometimes I feel like I'm talking too softly. All right, time to rinse these off.
going to create some binds coming out from the bottom of this. Now, if you wanted to prevent this from happening, you can put some Elmer's glue down on the bottom of that and let it dry before you ink and it will stop it. You can also use wax. You can use the same type of products that they use for making silk scarves. And I was going to test my liquid base glue to be used as an alternative for that. So let's just do that now. Remember, this is water soluble. However, it has to get pretty wet to be removed. So to test this, I guess I'll do like a I'm doing like a circle because you probably can't see that and then we need we need to wait for that to dry but I think if I kind of just roll over it to flatten it out a little bit speed up the testing process Sorry, I had to sneeze, so I muted it so you didn't have to be startled by me. Look at that. It has like a line going all the way through it. Isn't that trippy? <laughs> that's, that's why you iron and get all the creases out of your fabric first, because that's what that is. It's a, a wrinkle in the fabric created that, although I kind of like it. I'm painting upside down. Need to let my brain know it's okay to paint upside down. Make a butterfly with a soluble, soluble as a mask. So you just want me to just draw a butterfly out of my mind, don't you? Looks like somebody dragged their stick along the fence. <laughs> you know what I could do on that? I could have a branch come across here, and that's the shadow. Here we go. So if any of you are just coming in now, this is a, <laughs> a weird time to come in and see this upside down. Now I'm going to create, I want to create more depth in the wood. I'm going to add some more purple. I don't want it to be shiny though. Maybe not purple. This is indigo, which is a beautifully rich blue. And I'm adding that to this brown. To kind of make an almost black color. And I'm not going to go as thin with it this time. I 
I usually use some type of reference when I'm doing a butterfly. I'll pull a butterfly up on my tablet and look at it while I'm painting it. At very least. Yeah, if you're good at mixing colors, primary colors is all you need. You know, the difference between some colors you just can't mimic with just your primaries. Like the neons, and they do add an incredible look to uh, some things like flowers, for instance. And the metallics, well, you can't make a metallic without a metallic. So for those of you who are more advanced in your art, you can get metallic, you can get um, the flex. Sorry, I had to do a little clean up here. It's getting out of hand. You can see the metallics stick better to your skin. <laughs> and I'll probably have to redo my manicure after this, but you won't. I won't be filming again until next week, I think. Uh, actually, I'm, I think I'm going to be filming this weekend. I got lots to film. I still haven't done the unboxing video for the new Eversone machine that we are going to be adding to our site soon. All right, so what direction is the sun coming from? And you decide that and then make your shadow on the other side. Now I'm dragging my hand with my hand down on the fabric to create that strong line. I should have started on the other side. So I'm just doing a thin line there, and this is my chance to kind of beautify the knots in the wood. And bring up texture from the bottom. Very, very light touch. And now this side of my hand is going to be really dirty. <laughs> kind of creating the bottom of the, of the fence. I'm coming up. Almost had a big blob there. I tend to be more quiet when I have to think. Using just the very tip of the brush. And you can see some of the knots I'm doing darker than others. And this is setting the tone for the type of bird that I'll paint. So it's kind of a little bit of a cartoony kind of feel, not so much going for realism here. Oh, I gotta add a little water. Slate, slate. 
there's definitely something back there. It's dark between those two boards. Today I had a hummingbird that fed off of like every flower that I had in my garden. Then it went to my hummingbird feeders and it really just like ate from all of them. And then he kind of sat on a, on a branch and he looked like he had overeaten. So the resist is, I'm using my liquid-based glue, which is water-soluble stabilizer in a bottle. And I'm gonna test it in a minute with a, a light color, because I don't wanna have one spot that's, you know, doesn't make any sense. But don't let me forget about that. But you can use Elmer's glue as a resist for this as well. Just gotta wait for it to fully dry. And your fabric should be dry when you apply it. painting the cracks in the wood. It's going to be fun to wear this, I think. I know one thing. My shirts will appreciate me wearing it. Do you guys have magpies in your area? And if so, what color are your magpies? I had never seen a yellow one here before. None of you were talking. I'd love for you guys to share your art inside of the school. I didn't really do as much over here. Yeah, and uh, I would get white and black for sure, even though you can make black from mixing colors together. And um, there's a lot of controversy about whether or not you should use black in art. This is definitely easier if you're a new artist to have black as well. And know this, 
when I did reproduction art and I had to duplicate all of the colors in the paintings that I was painting, we had black, we had the primaries, and we had phthalo blue, and yellow ochre, and red sable, and raw umber, in addition to the primaries. <laughs> you want to have something to, to tone your fabric or your ink or your colors. So toning is done with black versus brown. And uh, so this, this whole painting has been, been toned with brown, not black. That's why I didn't grab a black to create the shadows in the wood. And now I'm creating the uh, illusion of a, of a shadow-ish shade by going over the, the vines that I created, but not entirely. So leaving some of it visible. And then I'm going to put some leaves in there. <laughs> so having fun. This is what art is all about. Just enjoying yourself, transporting yourself from what's going on in the world, making your own little world to live in. My favorite medium is oil. However, I do enjoy all of the mediums. I hope I didn't get all that liquid based glue on my elbow and end up not letting it dry before I did that. So I'm definitely laying my arm over it right now. I said red sable. That's the name of my brush. It was raw umber and burnt umber. Is it burnt umber? My goodness. I gotta brush myself up on the names of my paint colors. Well, this is just not the ordinary apron, is it? So have any of you painted on canvas before? Have you ever gone to one of those art places where you have wine and paint with family and friends? In just a minute, I'll be checking the resist. If you're wondering. If you already have our liquid-based glue, you know that you'll be ready to do it. All right, so now we're gonna make a green. I think I'm going to flip it over though. It's upside down to my brain. 
Oh, the resist first, right? So it's right here. <gasps> Excuse me. Got a hiccup. <laughs> it's right there, and I guess this would be the, the least. What we're trying to see is will our liquid base glue hold the border of this thin paint? Will it prevent it? from spreading and going beyond the border of that. Now this is a pretty thin area that I used here. <laughs> Looks like it's not letting it go anywhere, you guys. I should have had the same amount of consistency. Let's see. It's hard for you to see. Why is that not getting any darker? If I continue adding water, I'm just going to end up making it not hold. But the idea is to actually, so actually I did go beyond it because I just can't see. So if you can see, there's a, a moat right there and that's where the liquid base glue was. So it's actually preventing the ink from going where the liquid base is. And once we wash this, that liquid base will disappear and we'll just be left with that and that is a weird looking shape that I've created for my area. Try to blend it in. Okay, so it works as a resist, you guys. Isn't that cool? Definitely got a, a line there. Do you guys see that well? Do you like it? You like the fence idea? I think this is just a little bit. Ah. In all that time, I wasn't paying attention at the top, and it could have gotten really messed up. Are any of you sitting there going, man, just give me the brush. I would paint that this way. I would paint that that way. Do this, do that. <laughs> Please. Please just do what I'm envisioning in my mind. What a messy work area I've got. <laughs> Time to toss this, I think. I'm going to try not to have wasted that green. Yikes! <laughs> Don't be so messy, you guys. Make sure you're neat and tidy. Don't do what I do. Do what I say. A cat waiting on the fence. No push, no pressure. But we'd like you to paint a cat. That would be fun. What color cat would it be? I 
I was actually thinking about having a cat come, like, being hiding in the pocket. <laughs> but I thought the pocket was going to be higher because I was just designing this, laying, laying around, waiting to wake up this morning. So I thought I could have, like, the paws of the cat and then the cat head coming out of the pocket. <laughs> and then where's the hummingbird going to go? It's going to look like an artist threw up all over it if I'm not careful. That's what my son used to say when I would do some uh, graphic design. He'd go, Mom, it looks like an artist threw up all over the screen. <laughs> From a hummingbird to a butterfly to a dragonfly to a kitty on the fence. No pressure. What day would you like this to end? I could so do a cat like walking though on the fence. <gasps> My God. How big is the cat? How big the cat is determines how big the butterfly is and how big the hummingbird is. Oh my gosh. I can so see the cat chasing the butterfly on the fence. You had a bobcat on your lawn yesterday? Someone was chased down by one in her front yard. They had it on the news. Her husband chased it off and grabbed it and threw it, <laughs> threw it in the air because it was attacking his wife's legs. So be careful. Gosh, now I want to paint the cat and the and the and maybe have the cat and the butterfly and the hummingbird all be like tied into one another. This reminds me of rock painting. Because it really doesn't matter. There's no pressure. You can do whatever you want and just have fun with it. I love rock painting, by the way. Do any of you ever do that? Butterfly on a kitten's nose, or a kitty's nose. A gray cat would be easy to paint. Why is that? <laughs> it sounds like you're bargaining with me now. The gray kitty. You know why it would be easy for me? Because I've done it already. I have painted cats before. And I used to have a cat named Max. And he was a gray tabby. And I actually painted my cats and my dog, all the dogs in the family, on a painting. I could bring it in here for you guys to see. Would you guys like to see that painting? What is that? What's under there? There's a whole bunch of stuff under there. You're not supposed to leave your brushes in the water, and I'm doing that. Simply because I, I don't know where my egg crate is that I usually lay my brushes flat in. We'll be having ink remover as well, brush conditioning ink remover, which I didn't need, but now I do. Oh, how awesome. Did you get any pictures of the bobcat? All right, let's try to make this not look so weird. Gonna kind of make it look like ivy. Ivies are like a heart. And after you do the dark color, then you come in with the light color. Try to do it thinking of the light. A little white, if I have any left over here. It's all dry. Oh, I should not be doing this. I'm going to get my ink dirty. This is a metallic green, though. This is number 556, five, Halo Blue Gold again. I did use this already, so.
but now I'm combining it with green. And we're thicker. <laughs> or the ink is thicker. <laughs> not getting a nice point here but I don't want this to be too detailed because this is not detailed so if you make this too detailed this won't fall away and then this will look funny I may need a snack There we go. Now it's not, we're not doing as detailed. We, there's somebody else in the room. Somebody else is painting, not me. <laughs> Uh-oh, don't make it too thick, Claire. Then you won't be able to move up and do the cat. Because now we're doing a cat. I like the idea, though. I can't resist. And I'll go get the painting and bring it in here. And while you guys look at it for a minute, I will grab something to eat so I can continue. May have to feed the dogs too, a little something. I need music. Sometimes we mess up and we just do like one little thing and it's not a mess up. It's just a smaller leaf. But using the liquid based and doing it all along the bottom before would have eliminated all that running you're wondering why I did that so I'm listening to myself talk afterward and uh, I know I'm tired when I don't realize I'm not talking I'm just listening to myself and it feels like it's normal for me not to be talking, but I should be talking. <laughs> well, I hope you'll show the bobcat picture in the school. I'd love to see it. And this fabric is dry. And because the fabric's dry, the leaves are not running. I feel like I need to kind of make it softer on the edge. So how many mistakes have I made? Have I made any mistakes, you guys? There's no such thing as a mistake in art. It's up to you what you want it to look like and only you can point out a mistake to somebody watching or looking at it. Just like when you look at someone's face 
and you don't really know them that well, or even if you do know them that well, usually we watch people talk. We walk, we watch their expression. We don't stare at their face looking for a mole on their cheek. And I would bring that up in shows all the time. I'd say, how many of you saw that, and I have to remember which cheek I have it on, that I have a mole on my cheek? Did you know? There it is. And everyone would go, no, I didn't notice until now. And, and that's, that's what you think about when you do any kind of work of art. You go, no one is looking for the mole on your cheek. They're just looking at your whole face or your whole work of art. And most people will not be able to see those little flaws that to you are huge in your mind. That's just an illusion. And most people will not notice. Although my son has this innate ability to see the flaw in my paintings. So I would always ask him to do a once over, you know, tell me what's wrong with it. And uh, if there was anything wrong with it, perspective wise or whatever, he would spot it. And it just blew my mind how easily he could find a mistake in something. And I would sit there and just know something was wrong, but I couldn't figure it out. And one time he told me that I had something wrong and I covered the whole canvas with white paint and started all over again. And then he said he would never tell me again. <laughs> he would never judge a painting again because it messed him up. It really bothered him that I just covered up all the art and it was a sizable canvas too. So it was, it was something else for him to go through. So. All right, so now that metallic ink works really good because it, it looks like many different colors in the leaves. So um, I'm fine with that just the way it is, but I may because I say things like that and then I go, but if you just did a little highlight with maybe some pearl white. This is... This is one of my, I didn't take the paper off the right way. Ah. Sorry, I had to sneeze again. Right now the cottonwoods are releasing the little cotton balls in our area. <laughs> there we go. Finally. I have palette knives for this <laughs> somewhere. There we go. Now I'm not blending it perfectly on purpose. I just want to kind of have the hint of the sunlight capturing. This is definitely not the right brush for this it's too big. Not all the leaves either, just some. Yeah, I think I should have just left it alone. It was enough. All right, I'm going to go get the cat painting. And then I'm going to look for a cat to look at in my tablet. 
So I do a good cat, even though I can see one in my mind's eye. I'm going to rinse my jars too. And if I could just find my egg crate, I feel like I threw it away. That wasn't very smart if I have. Oops. This is why you wear a shirt that you don't care about. Or an apron. Like I'm painting right now. It's one of my favorite fan brushes of all time. I'm, I want to find a source for this so I can provide it for you because it's just a great size for some of the techniques that I'm going to show you because I'll be getting more into art starting with art by going into fabric with art with the inking and ultimately I will be teaching painting on canvas Teach you some of the techniques I use to paint 40 to 100 paintings a day. So, is it equally messy on both sides? I don't think it is. I want to make it like kind of, you know, match. And the idea is to make an apron that allows you to do whatever you want. And you get dirty and no one can tell you're dirty because the whole thing is dirty. Right? So I'm going to soften up, soften this up a little more by adding more dots. There we go. Should I have a blue sky behind the kitty? I definitely need to clean all my water. Shouldn't take me that long. I'm making it sound like it's going to take me forever. I'm pretty quick at this kind of stuff. And I know you guys want to have some time to go eat your dinner. I don't want to waste that green. Actually, I don't want to waste that either. I'm just not going to rinse those. It's the water that I wanted to rinse. Okay, you guys. Be right back. These are going to be rinsed.
I'm back in the room and I stubbed my toe. Hi, Tink. What are you getting on the floor? Come here, baby. Get in your spot. There you go. This is the painting that I did of the pets. And that's Max. This was Suki. This was Coco. And then you can see Chase over there. And Zoe is all the way on the left hand, or all the way over there. So unfortunately, the, uh, the two that are still with us is Chase and Suki. I mean, Chase and Tinkerbell. And you can see Tinkerbell has her bunny that she's had her whole life ever since she was brought home. And Chase, well, he's always got a ball. And this is acrylic, one of my acrylic paintings. It's a lot of fun, but I'll be able to teach you guys how to do this kind of stuff. What do you think? You like it? Now I got to put it somewhere safe so it doesn't get any ink on it. Great kitty walking across <laughs> the fence. Oh my goodness! You know the problem with this this idea is this is your this is your belly. So I got a cat walking around here. Could just have the cat laying here and have his tail come down. And then do a flower that comes down from up here with a hummingbird and a, and a butterfly. Instead of the cat walking because it will be, it won't be that visible. Do I have agreement? Let's see what I can find here. Come on. I don't use my tablet that much. Gray tabby. I have lots of pictures of Max, but I don't have it in, in my tablet. Gray tabby sleeping. And then images. My microphone too far away. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. Thanks for saying something. You think Maxie needs to be on there? He looks just like this kitty. Oh, that looks just like Mau Mau. That looks like a painting. Can't be that. 
got to have is like, oh, I should say, on a fence. Maybe we'll get the perfect image. <laughs> Can you guys see that? That's uh, very cute, but that wouldn't be the way they'd sleep on top of a fence, would it? Be more like have the tail come down. He doesn't have to be sleeping. He can just be. So here's a cat. Oh, it's a kitten. That looks, that's what Mau Mau Maxie looked like when he was a kitten. I could have him walking across. Kind of like that, where the cat's paws are hanging off and the tail is hanging down. Anybody have an opinion, or is it only better days? Everybody else bailed. I'm starting to feel like you guys aren't here. Let's see. There's a cat sleeping on a fence. I kind of like the idea of a tail going down to kind of break up that clear line that I created by not ironing this first. <laughs> oh, I'm starting to get tired, you guys. There's a limit to how many hours I go now. I, I swore I wouldn't go more than, I swear I wasn't going to go more than four hours. And I have to be realistic on how long I can, it takes to paint these things. Oh my goodness. Come on, give me the perfect one. I kind of like the idea of him walking across the top. <laughs> I like the way that you say that. I was picturing the cat walking so, you know, do that. <laughs> if it's a kitten, that gives me, that gives me, that gives me more room to work with instead of a cat. Uh, I could get lost in the kitty pictures for hours, I think. So let's see, walking on a fence. There's probably 10 million pictures of cats on the internet. What do you think? Oh, that one's cute. This one's really cute. Isn't that cute? Should I do that one? Something like it anyway? We'll see how it goes. I'm not asking for a vote. I'm just going to do it. And remember, it'll be kind of like a cartoon kind of feel, not a real cat. One day I could do that for you. Do a real... Hi, Tinkerbell. What are you doing, baby? 
You want to be the one on the fence? Oh, you're moaning. Are you upset because I'm still working? Uh, she says she wants to be on top of the fence. <laughs> there you go, Bobby. I know you're frustrated. All right, well. I have this ink that is iron erasable. We got our little paw. I gotta try to make them small. Max had a big tail. And the ears, those cute ears that kitties have, such cute ears, don't they? Do not go to sleep. You'll have to stay awake. I need it. That head too big for that bottom. The cat's got a smile on his face. My cat Max used to think he was a dog. And he would chase dogs. He would run out to the street when people were walking their dogs. And one time this guy yelled at me and said, you need to lock up your cat because it's chasing after my dog. And I just started laughing. <laughs> You're afraid my little cat will hurt your big dog? And it was a big dog too. Can't remember what kind, but it was sizable. All right, well, this will work itself out in ink. Let's see. There's its tushy. Come around. Jeez, you guys, you know, I don't know. You guys push me pretty hard every week. No pressure, just draw in front of everybody. Could have traced if I'd known I was going to do this. It's got a belly. And this is its shoulder for the other paw that's coming down here. And there's its toe. Too big. See, some of the toes are going over the fence. The head's too big. After all this, I'm like, is this for sure my iron erase pen? <laughs> That ear's too big, too far back. 
All right, we'll see what we got here. So if it's walking and it's on a fence and there's going to be a bird, there's either flowers behind the fence, which is what's going on in this picture, which I kind of liked. So you can see the, the flowers and they're growing some in between the, the fence as well. See what we got? Can she do it in front of everybody live? Does it look too big, Tina? If I don't make the cat that big, there's that, that hummingbird's gonna be so small, you're not gonna be able to see it. So that's my take on it. The paws are white on this. I don't have to do that though. I can do whatever colors I want. And that's me talking to myself. And I'm dry fabric, dry-ish. So now to kind of sketch out the cat. I feel like this is not proportionate. But it's just a what? What is this? An apron. This is one of those times when you should print out and use the cutter pillar. The tablet still keeps wanting to go to sleep and to get your proportions right, at least you should be eating and Make it wet, not too wet. Can't believe you guys talked me into this. It's not my cat, so I'm not as familiar with drawing it. I can't tell if my head's been in the way or not. Da, 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 da. Okay, there I go again. I should be using the light tablet. Too too much pressure. Although with that canvas with Maxi, I didn't even, I just drew on the canvas, but I wasn't, on, I wasn't watched <laughs> by a bunch of people while I did it. Hi, 
Gente. Hi, Chase. He's like, aren't you supposed to stop? It's almost six. It's got more of a dog shape nose right now. No, you don't. Don't you dare turn off. I need you awake. <laughs> Ah, that paused way too. F you were right. That paw was way too big for the cat. <laughs> and I already started on tail. No, good. Whew. So, um, I've been sewing more than I've been painting lately, so I'm kind of rusty as well. I cannot believe that I'm doing this. I usually draw short haired cats, not furry cats, so this one's it's a little challenging. That paw needs to be small. Fur needs to come down more. Kitty cat. That's tan paw behind there. Doing a broken line. Come up. So we're not going to go that far. Oh yeah, that was way off. Sorry, I'm so quiet, but you know, this, this is taking me concentration under pressure. Yeah, aloe vera gel, some people use to extend the ink tense pencils. 
I haven't tested the ink tints pencils yet. I'll be doing that soon. And then I'll do a tutorial on them and figure out if I, if I like that process that they're talking about. But I think it was Larie. She hasn't been around for a little while. She popped in, I think, for a little bit, a couple weeks back. I need to iron this away. <laughs> it's distracting me. It's a furry, furry little tush on that kitty cat. So hungry, you guys. It's going to be what it is. This is the most quiet I've ever been on one of my videos. This cat, this tail, this foot's, so I can't tell, this foot behind? The picture's hard to tell which paw is behind. ones behind. And it's white, but it's all right. It doesn't matter. It's a cat. There's that leg and there's a stretch of about that much. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, talk to me, you guys. Ask me questions so that I can uh, not feel like I'm boring anyone. Well, I have a set of 72 pencils coming and I'll be testing those. This back paw is bothering me. It's 
such a furry cat. Usually you can identify the legs better. And the flowers behind it is also distracting. I'm making excuses in case you can't tell. <laughs> So if you ever want to do this, make sure you, if you're really good at drawing cats, then you're fine. But if you feel like you might struggle like I am right now, there's no reason not to print out the cat and then use the light tablet to transfer your design. Good there. It needs a little something, a little other color going on, I think. I'm getting it a little wet inside, but not too wet because we don't want it to bleed out. It's the cat. The cat must not be messy like the flowers. Phew. I'm still not happy with this, but at least we have the overall structure. It looks great. I love you, Tina. <laughs> She didn't say it looks good. She said it looks great. The eyeball's too big. Where is the perfect color for the eye? I need to put some flowers under there. This will be a time when black will come in handy or important. So I'll put a little discolor throughout. Not too wet, not too wet. I know I'll be glad when this is done that we did this, but <laughs> it'd be better if I could iron that away so I don't have double lines. More excuses. So Ellen told you to use it? Oh, the, uh, we're talking about the aloe vera gel. I think it's interesting. I can't wait to, till they arrive and I can play around with them. I have just about every other art supply there is on the planet. 
I even think I have an ink tens, ink tens pencil somewhere in my stash and I just haven't looked for them yet. This is too detailed for this mess. Now the fence is okay. We're working with the fence. I need something to smear my... What did I do with it? Oh, there it is. Oh my, 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 my. Pushy, 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 pushy. <laughs> Just paint a cat and put a butterfly. Do a dragonfly and a hummingbird all in one unplanned project because we said so this is not whatever you want claire to do saturday feels a little bit like it though if you're not familiar with what that is that is something that the vips get every third saturday of the month they get to tell me whatever they want me to do. Even if I want to do something else, which is kind of what happened today, isn't it? I'm going to have his paw be on the fence. Because this kitty has white paws and has white chin. There I go again, listening to myself, thinking I'm listening to you guys have a conversation. <laughs> Art supplies are important. Art is good for your emotional well-being. Can you see the kitty's paws on the fence now? bit of this and a little bit of that. Okay, we got bright white back paw. Then why am I doing it? Because <laughs> you guys are, because I'm easily manipulated by you guys. And I'm having fun. I'm just sounding whiny. I'm not really whiny. I actually enjoy you guys pushing me to the limit each week. I find it thrilling to try to meet your expectations. I guess I got a little bit of adrenaline rush from the challenge of pushing through to the other side of a project when it goes or appears to be going wrong. It's got all the white socks. I love their chubby toes. Almost a straight line right there. It's 
It's not my best cat, but it's not done yet either. I just can't believe you guys hang out as long as you do. face is too big for the cat. Sorry, I'm so quiet again. Hopefully you guys have music on or something. <laughs> so you're not in total silence when I'm quiet. I need you on. Can't wait till it's done and I can wear it. It's getting to be cute, isn't it? There's this awkward moment in most art where it kind of looks like, oh boy, should I even continue? And then finally it comes to you and you go, oh wow, that's all right. It's, it's, it's not as bad as I thought. It's working out. Get up there. It's a kitten, not a full-grown cat. I'm trying to think if I've ever drawn a kitten before. Just 
just a cute little black tip on his ear. All this for an apron, you guys. <laughs> All right. There's this comedian that has a pretty funny skit about being married to a crafty woman. That's what I think it is. Dry bar comedy. You guys should look it up. Pretty funny. <laughs> he talks about how much money is spent to create something that you could buy at the dollar store for a dollar. <laughs> If I remember, I'll give you guys a link in the school so you guys can giggle. Now I gotta give it some shadow on the fence. Does it look like he's on the fence to you guys? I need real black now because I simply don't have enough colors to make it a really well maybe I do we'll add some indigo I need some really, really dark red and then I usually use a is it crimson red, indigo and purple to make a really good black. But I have black, I just have to take a minute to find it. Now I need some white. I did sculpture when I was in uh, ninth grade and won a scholarship to Cal State Northridge for a summer, summer school for doing sculpture with uh, real clay. And I did a lion's head, or no, the whole body, a lion. It was in our garden for many, many years. I don't know what happened to it. Wait, 
where's my black black? Not much left of this. I think I need a little bit of a yellow-ish tint because the tabby does kind of have that hue. Well, I did not shake that enough. Oh my, 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 my. I know dogs, I know. You're fed up with mommy. Kind of a dirty yellow. A little wet, but not too wet because we don't want this to spread out. Just a tabby. They seem like a really simple cat to draw until you're drawing them and realize there's lots of colors running through them. The head's bigger because it was furry and I didn't draw it furry. I miss doing clay work. I would like a kiln in my backyard so I can fire it myself. I've seen people build them out of trash cans and do the raku, raku style of firing. Have any of you done any Raku work. I think I'm pronouncing it right. I did have an art gallery for a while and I had a, an artist that did that. It was beautiful. Kind of reminded me of what happens to, to copper when it's out in the sun a lot. Or out in the elements. So should I have blue sky? Time for you guys to participate again. Or I'm going to stop painting. I can always make this cat look better later. And get on to the rest or 6.15, it's four hours, I'm hungry. If you guys don't respond, I'm gonna stop and call it a day. Does he look cute now? He's no longer looking weird. Go. 
Did you do Raku in your own yard? Barely see the other paw behind. What keeps me going is the fact that this color was created by mixing all these other colors together. So to duplicate this color would require me really, really, really remembering everything I did already today. What is that? Get off my paintbrush. All right, let's give this little guy some fur. I'm just glad it's past that awkward stage where I'm questioning whether or not I'm going to keep going. Too big. Where's my small brush? Alright, I don't mind it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move on. I'd like to get rid of that red shadow cat that I sketched out and we don't have any whiskers yet. Use a toothpick. Well, one blob came out too big. Oh well, it's not perfect. Okay. I feel like I should call it quits, you guys. Six six twenty, right? Yeah. I'm getting too hungry. But I'm gonna do something up here. I always do a hummingbird another day, too. <clears throat> this is the aqua. Do I have another bowl? I do. Oh. 
So I have it on a paper towel and the paper towel is wet <laughs> and I'm just going to see what happens. Just kind of create a fabric-y looking blue instead of still have the ability to add a, maybe I'll do that on the VIP Saturday for this month. We'll do the hummingbird and a butterfly in there. Yeah, I'm too tired <laughs> to do much more, you guys. I don't want to do a bad job just because I'm tired. And I can't, like, iron away those red lines from that ink until I clear the area. I like it when you guys end up showing me a little compassion. <laughs> I think she's whined enough. We should let her go for the night. I wasn't even planning on a cat. So I think you guys got a deal. Because a cat's a lot harder than a hummingbird. And a butterfly. So now I'm going to kind of make it look cloudy by adding the white in there. So what do you think, Tina? You're in the VIP group, I think, right? Want me to do the bird and on the VIP group? So this is kind of cool because it's got the metallic-y look to it. I can have a butterfly right here. The cat's chasing after the butterfly. And then a flower that comes down here and a hummingbird going up to it. But I really think it's cute. Without the need for the hummingbird. I think steam would erase this too. Should be able to just shoot steam on that and even a blow dryer would get rid of those lines. It doesn't have to be an iron, it just has to be heat. But I will definitely be adding like flowers up here, maybe sunflowers. So, yes, it's time. I'll stand up and show it to you as a whole. Maybe you won't be disappointed as much by seeing how much I actually did today. It's kind of cute where he hit, ends up hitting, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, 
I hope that you guys enjoyed hanging out with me while I inked this apron. And if you don't have the fabric inks yet, be sure to go to creativefeet.com. We have links after the live is over and you close the live chat. There's a little downward like arrow looking icon that appears. And that's where you find all the links to all the different items and supplies that I use in my videos. And I hope that this inspires you to get out the inks and play around with them. You can, you can find blanks like this in lots of different stores and um, buy like a blank t-shirt that you like how it fits you. And if you start from the bottom and work your way up, I think you might be surprised at how pretty a fabric you can create from a already made shirt. You can even do some of the tie dye techniques with this by having a bowl big enough and then you fill it with, with the ink and dilute it to the point, test it on a little piece of like scrap t-shirt and then dip the bottom of the shirt into the ink and let it kind of smear out and then wait for it to dry and add another color in the middle and, and create tie-dye tie effects by tying rubber bands and twisting and pouring from above and then blow dry it and then open it up and it's like astonishing how much it looks like tie-dye. And I enjoy hanging out with you as well. Better days. And even better days, you have the same color icon on there. So I think it's always one person, but there's two of you. I hope I didn't neglect any of you in the chat. Know that I, I don't have time to go back and review the chats each week. But if you have a comment that you'd like me to address afterward, you, the video stops, then there's a comment section and you can type your comments in there. And I do try to answer every comment that comes through to all of my YouTube videos. And hopefully next week, we'll also be streaming to Facebook as well at the same time. For those of you who prefer to watch inside of the Facebook community, I will have pictures of the apron inside of Create with Claire Rowley, my free online school that is at create.clairerowley.com. And let's see, I can add that to the chat right now for you. Oh, I can also share. I forgot. I'm not on that other site. Oops. <laughs> so here is my school, createwithclairowley.com. And inside of the creator groups, we have the Fabrically Speaking Live creative group. Come on. It's always a little slow when we're live. And this is today's live. So this is where you can make comments and where I will post close up photos of the actual project that I did today. And back to the creator groups. This is where you'll find the VIP group if you want to be a part of that group. And it is an exclusive group. Inside of the group, we have topics. Inside of the topics, we have live sessions, free patterns. Um, I also have a photo gallery and they get special discounts in addition to discounts, which we do have a discount running right now, you guys. If you go to creativefeet.com at the top, it doesn't show the coupon. But we have one running until midnight tonight. If I put it in here now, I can't. I don't know it by heart. So I'll tell you what, I will see to it that my son creates another coupon or I will post the coupon inside of the school right after I'm done here. 
You get free shipping right now, too, over $49. So good time to order. So inside of the, the school itself, I'll just do it in the entire school. I'll send out an email. So if you join the school, which is free to join, you don't have to be a VIP member. I will be posting a coupon in there that's good till midnight tonight that was made available because I was live on someone else's channel yesterday. And I thought he was going to leave it up, but he didn't for everybody. So it's just for special people like you. Pays to join the school. And I'm going to post that. Where? Why can't I post? Where is my spot to post? In the chat. Oh, I never, I never posted that. <laughs> I thought I posted that before. All right, so this is the link. That's not working. It was so weird this, when I started today when the mic didn't work. It's not letting me copy my link. Why not? It's because you're hungry. Oh, I don't have my keyboard on. That's all. <laughs> That's what happens when I'm hungry. Yeah. So I will put the coupon in the school. As soon as I get off here, I'll, I'll go in and and post it or I think I think I have it here I'm good now then I don't have to worry about forgetting I'd hate to disappoint you guys after saying it boy my hands are dirty it's a fun kind of messy though isn't it I think you texted me the coupon code yes I'm posting it right now in the school All right, 10% off plus. And I'll tell you what, the inks weigh a lot, so the shipping can get up there. 10% off plus free shipping. Where am I? Oh, I'm typing over there. On orders over $49. Good through midnight tonight. I want better eyesight. I do know how to spell. And the reason I don't say the coupon is because this video is forever. When you enter the code, so you have to make sure you enter the coupon. And I believe when you, for the free shipping, it's when you're choosing your shipping options. Like you can choose to pay as shipping. And some people do because they're really nice and they just want to help us out, make sure that we're not losing any money. But if you want to take advantage of the, of the free shipping, make sure you select the free shipping option. If you're already a member of the school, you'll get an email with this in just a minute. The screen is three feet away from me. And 
There we go. The coupon is sent. Your hands are messy too. I'm glad you had fun, Tina. Thank you. Thank you, Lorinda. You were still there. Oh, you were commenting. Thank you guys for being compassionate and not pushing me to do the butterfly and the hummingbird. But know that I do. I do want to do it. I want to have the cat chasing a butterfly, I think. Or have it be on its nose. Because of the eyes are, I kind of made them so they were looking up at the tip of his nose so that uh, it would apply. And um, if you are new to my channel and you're still watching, thanks for sticking around. If you like the video, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. Be sure to join my school so you can be one of my creatives, be part of the Creative Feet family. I love you all so much, and I got to bring up my ending button, my outro. So with this, I will see you next Thursday. Bye. Mwah.